because I'm Natasha McCarty. And uh, today we are making this rather glorious wrap. Here we go, let's have a little look. Now you can make this in whatever fabrics you fancy. Here it is. Um, and it comes down the, ooh, in a nice V across the back. So you can swing it. And if you wanted something that's longer at the front, just swing it around and have the crossover at the back. It's entirely up to you um, how you want to wear it. But that is what we're making today. Now, I cannot take any credit for this at all. Mm -mm. This is all um, our dear friend Elizabeth's um, idea. She sent me the pan ages ago. And I sat on it and sat on it and sat on it. And I'll be completely honest with you. I sat on it for so long because rolled hem scared me. <laughs> That's OK. I'm putting it out there. Rolled hems scared me. So big girl pants on, sort out the rolled hem, and we are away. So that's how it happens, isn't it, in life? You either are defeated by something or you face it down and, uh, and you crack on with it. So I have now learnt, because you know me, I like a challenge, I've now learnt to do rolled hems three ways. Yes, I have. And for any of you that are equally bamboozled by the rolled hem, um, I'm going to show you those three ways today. So whether you have got just a sewing machine and just a normal presser foot, sorted. Whether you have got a rolled hem foot that is gathering dust in your bits and bobs that go with your uh, machine because, you know, it's one of those feet that came with the machine. Great value. Never used. Oh, what do we do with it? Yeah, I'll show you. Or if after the demo you want to buy yourself a rolled hem foot, we've got those on the show as well. We've got everything sorted. And then if you have an overlocker, then I'm going to show you the just the different things, just the different settings to put onto your machine if your overlocker is capable of doing a rolled hem, which a lot are. So that is basically today's show in a nutshell. So um, you can get, this is the pattern. Josh has done a lovely job on it here. And it's it's a simple make looks far more complex than it is. I'm not going to lie, I did have to scratch my head a bit about it and how to do it and how to make it and how to make the instructions easy for you to see as well and to understand. I think actually demoing it will be a lot easier, if I'm honest. Um, but the instructions are there for you to back up um, what you see on the show as well. You'll be like, oh, I get it. I get it. I guess it's how you learn, though, isn't it? If you're someone that likes pictures or words or um, visuals, then it's entirely up to you. But who do we have with us today? Let's see. Jojo, gosh, you're early this morning. Jojo, good morning. Uh, we've got Diane as well. And Heather, good morning. And Wendy, good morning. Oh, you like the shirt? I wasn't sure about the shirt, but I thought, give it a go. Give it a go. Uh, hi, Kate. Good morning to you. Lovely to have you with us this morning. And Sue and Francis as well. And Jill and Diane. Hello. And Naomi. Oh, Kate, I went and sourced. Oh, I've had so much fun sourcing boxes. You know, we talked last week about doing um, Christmas boxes and advent calendars. And Kate came up with a great idea of a 12 days of Christmas box. So I think I've got an option to suit everybody. Um, that's my hope, I think. I think I've got it all sorted now. And I had great fun shopping for the boxes and the hampers and everything else. It was lovely. Um, Joe's there, Jill's there. Hello, and Sue and Natalie. Good morning. Natalie, how's the hamster? We need to know. Uh, Linda and Hazel and Jill. Good morning. And Yvonne and Susan. Good morning. And Lisa. Hello, hello. And Laurie. Good morning from a sunny Suffolk, finally. Have you guys had the winds and the rain and the everything else? It's been hideous, hasn't it? Um, Pam's here. Good morning. Oh, you love the wrap. It, it, Again, I can take no credit for it, but it is beautiful. Um, it's all Elizabeth, Elizabeth Krangle, our friend Elizabeth on here. Uh, Linda and Julia, good morning. And Karen, um, yeah, Karen says she loves the wrap and the cat cushion. Now, the cat cushion is on um, purely to tease you. This will be on tomorrow's show, okay? Um, when we brought the dog Christmas cushion, you know, the dogs with the, uh, lots of you said, but what about us cat lovers? What about us cat lovers? So Kath Hardcastle, being the amazing artist that she is, went, well, actually, I've drawn this lovely photo, uh, this lovely photo, it looks like a photo, doesn't it? This beautiful picture of her son's ragdoll, Scruffy, I think his name is. <gasps> he's not scruffy, he's gorgeous. Uh, and so we've got panels for that. 
which are just beautiful so that you can make, and that's a big cushion. I put a 20 inch cushion in there, cushion pad in there. He is rather, rather lovely. Now we've got a limited number of him tomorrow, um, but if there's enough interest, then we will do, because Kath's had these printed, these panels printed, uh, and there's been lots of toing and froing. She's even designed the fabric. Hang on, let me show you the fabric um, that is on the back here. So she's designed all of this. And this is the first time that we've ever done anything like this on Natasha Makes. So it would be really lovely to support her. Um, you know, if this is the sort of thing that you want to see more of, then um, then let's uh, get behind Kath and support her because it's it, she's just so clever. She's just so clever. So we'll pop Scruffy there for a second. He's looking at you. <laughs> and um, what else have I got? Oh, gosh, I've got so much to show you this morning. Um, I've got to remember everything uh, that I'm doing. And uh, b -b 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 morning, Margaret and Anne. Hello, hello, hello. Um, oh, you see, Natalie's all in lockdown. She's all Welsh. Um, Geraldine, good morning. Very unusual blouse. Yeah, I'm still not sure about it, but it's growing on me. Um, sometimes you've got to try these things, haven't you? Lee from Australia. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Hello. And Fiona as well. Um, oh, lots of you being very kind about it. Thank you. Um, Joe. It, well, Joe Williams, I mean, that's that's a very Welsh surname, isn't it? In lockdown in Wales as well. So looking forward for us to cheer her up. Uh, well, we will do our very best. Barbara's um, <laughs> must have been up with the larks. She's, uh, her son's cleaning is all done. However, she thought, hang on, clean out the bins, took a bucket of hot water and bleach outside, balanced by jet and then buckets slipped. And I was, oh, no. Now have a lovely pair of bleached black trousers. Oh, has anyone, actually this is the place to ask, has anyone ever tried any of those Dylon um, fabric dyes that's meant to put the colour back into faded black jeans? Because actually they came, you know I had that, um, that order sent to me in error by my suppliers, uh, there's some of that in there and I can always buy it off them and put it on the website if you want to give that a go, Barbara. I mean, you know, maybe that is just the universe going, we'll sort you out, Barbara. You just tell Natasha about your trousers and, uh, and we'll sort that out for you. Who knows? Who knows? Good morning, Kirsty. Uh, yeah, we all love the cat cushion. Uh, used to have a half Siamese, half ginger tom called Oliver. Ah, oh, he was a typical ginger Tom who talked to you, but Siamese are like that as well. My granddad had a Siamese called Simi, Simba his name was, and he wasn't his cat at all. He adopted him from down the road, um, and the owners were very sweet about it, and they just went, mm, well, you know, when a Siamese decides you're his person, you're his person, there's not really a lot that we could do about it, because granddad kept taking him back and taking him back and taking him about, but Simi loved granddad, and that was the end of that. Uh, morning Veronica, hello, hello, and Janet, good morning, um, hello all of you, Myra, good morning, watching from a relaxing hot bath, that sounds amazing, but probably a good job that I'm not, you know, broadcasting from my bath, oh, Fiona, coffee made, purchases made, looking forward to this, good, um, and Dad was just pleased it's not raining yet, well, you know, we have all things to be grateful for, haven't we? Um, and Jane can't make it this morning. And, uh, but that's okay. Oh, oh, Mr. Tumble has taken over. I try and live my life in a really positive light. But uh, I just, I just can't, just, I just don't love Mr. Tumble. Morning, Helen. Um, I've seen I've got an email from you. I will have a look in the warehouse. Bear with me. Oh, Leanne's got her car in from an MOT this morning. Oh, I've got to have a new clutch on the fun bus. No fun, is it? Um, hello, hello. Good morning, Kath. Look, look, look Kath's watching. Uh, your cat's watching you back, Kath. And, um, oh, it's sunny in Pitt and Weem. Well, this is all very good news. And sunny in Plymouth as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, this is excellent news. And Linda's knitting today. Oh, no, she's got a horrendous bad back. Oh, sewing's a no-go. But you know what, though, Linda? Um, it's so lovely that you have other things that you can do. You know, some people, if they have a bad back, would just be like, well, I can't do anything. That's it. But no, you've persevered and gone, well, I'll just knit instead. I like that can-do attitude. Um, 
So the wrapper's got instructions and if you want to get the rolled hem information, so you've just got it there just to glance at, then you, if you buy it with, with that as a set, then yeah, we knocked a couple of quid off just, you know, because we can. Um, now, threads. Let's talk threads. Let's talk Aurifil for a moment here. We've got various threads on the show today, but let's just talk Aurifil because uh, a lot of you knew that... Um, Obviously, when COVID hit, it struck Italy quite badly. And um, so some of the suppliers of Aurifil thread has been a little bit hit and miss. So what I wanted to do was get what I could and um, bring you a little treat, a little Aurifil based treat. So for those of you that quilt and love working with 100% cotton, beautiful, beautiful threads. This is a 50 weight um, thread. And do you remember when we launched? For those of you that have been with us from the get-go, uh, then you might remember that we launched a deal whereby if you bought um, a certain number of threads, then you got the white thread, this one here, and the storage box for free. Well, that's kind of back in different guises. I've got a f you've got four extra in there and the white in that one, and then you've got three and then the white. So I've got sets of five and four, basically, is what I'm saying. I am limited on stock of these. I just wanted to see if this was something that you wanted. Um, but basically, yeah, you're getting your white because, whoops, everybody needs white, right? White, right? Um, you're getting the white for free and the storage and then the others, I hope, are really, really useful, beautiful threads. So let's take a look at what is in. This is the only pack of five that we've got. Um, that's my one. Let's move that out of the way for now. And let's move these out of the way for now. Gosh. So that I can show you all of these different threads. Here we go. So you've got this, I don't, apologies, I have not learnt all of their names. Because they just come with numbers and then all the names are on the website, being all swanky and on the website-ish, all over the place. Let me pop that there so that I can still see you all. Right, so we've got this lovely sort of pistachio -y green white, it's not called that. And then a beautiful neutral, sort of a mushroomy colour, uh, champagne-y colour if you will. There's your white, that one's for free. And then this one you can use with all your creams. And again, really, so this is like neutrals with a lovely light green in there. And then, ba ba da ba 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 ooh, variegated thread, beautiful. So, that's going to work beautifully with your yellows, your blues, your whites. Um, that is also going to work beautifully with purples as well because it will pull those colours through. Or if you just want a highlight, beautiful thread, then that is in there. Um, so that is option numero one. Let's put those away and get the second one out. This is your second option here. And this, you are getting in here can just stand them up, can't I? Uh, this one, now this is going to work beautifully actually with the with fabric I'm using today. Um, and then that is like a li slightly lighter cream there. There's your white there. And then, there you go, there's your blue and white variegated there. So you've got your white, that one's for free. Put that one away. And then a cream, kind of goldy colour, so that's going to be really great for festive seasons coming up. And then you've got your beautiful blues there. So if you've got any blues, that's a winner. Um, I've got a few of those. And then the other version of this that I've got, instead of the gold, if you don't want to be festive and gold-like, then why not go for, um, well, in this one, you'll have the black and the white and then your, your sort of creamy colour there. And then that's your, that's your variegated that one's free, storage is free, you're just paying for that, that and that. And they are on the website, but when they are gone, they are gone. I will have to try and order some more. Um, but this was just a little, a little taster for you. There we go. Um, so I hope that is of interest to some of you. Gorgeous. Right, let's pop that down there. Okay, uh, now what do we want to look at next? Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Shall we have a look at the fabrics? So, 
I um, took a little trip to London last week and I went to see my friend Alistair at House of Alistair. Now, um, Alistair is absolutely swamped at the moment with orders. He's, he's doing so well, bless him. But obviously with COVID and everything, staffing has been an issue. So what we have agreed, because we haven't stocked his stuff for a while because he just hasn't had time to fulfill our orders for us. Um, and I don't, I don't want that to be a thing. So what we're doing is um, at the start of next week, a van, I've been down and picked everything. He's now picking it all for me. And um, on Monday or Tuesday next week, a van full of House of Alistair goodies will be winging its way to me um, so that you guys can have House of Alistair and we can send it straight out from here, which is what we can do now. Um, originally, when we started, the whole idea of Natasha Makes is that we'd have different suppliers and they would send everything out from there and I wouldn't need warehousing and I wouldn't need this and I wouldn't need that. And then COVID hit and everything changed. The whole game plan had to change. So... Um, yeah, we are delighted, absolutely delighted to be able now to stock House of Alistair goodies and that will be from next week. So some of the fabrics, some are coming from House of Alistair and they will be arriving next week. So you can pre-order basically. So if you see on, on the website that it says delayed dispatch, that is why. Okay, and that will hold up the rest of your order as well. So if you're in a hurry for the wrap, then wait for that to go up online as a digital download um, and then you can get making. But yeah, some of the fabrics are going to be, um, the, yeah, they're on their way. Basically, they're on their way. So do take a look at the website because, because this beautiful fabric and 10 other colours is all on there. And hang on, <laughs> I didn't plan this very well, did I? This is the absolutely, oh, hang on, I've got a piece down here. What am I doing? Whoop. This is the absolutely beautiful, stunning jacquard fabric. Okay, now this is 146 centimetres wide, so perfect for your dressmaking. <coughs> I believe it's polyester, but how stunning is that? And just the way that the light catches it. And this is the colour that I've made my one out of. It's also absolutely perfect for backing your waistcoats and things like that. Also, just as a scarf, I mean, just as a scarf, that would be absolutely stunning and I've got it in 11 different colorways there are also there's a beautiful cream and a beautiful ivory um, in there as well a white and an ivory or white and cream I can't remember which around it is uh, but just look at how so one way you get more of the gold and the other way you get more of the blue and vice versa beautiful so that's one of them and like I say I mean look at this and this is where that gold thread that you're getting in the orophil would be, you know, really beautiful. Imagine cushions made out of this as well. <gasps> so decadent. So decadent. Um, I have loved this fabric for many, many years. And I've always had this in my stash now for at least the last five years. I've always had this in there. Now, whether you want to maybe make hubby a scarf or maybe this is going to be the inside of a tie, or maybe this is going to be the tie if you're making for him. Um, I actually bought a whole load of wool fabric. Well, I didn't really know what I was doing many, many years ago, and I wanted to make my husband a scarf that was wool on the outside and then this lined um, underneath for, you know, evening wear. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Or if you just want that hint of elegance, it's really, really beautiful fabric. Just look at how that moves. Um, it's absolutely stunning. So this is all on the website. Like I say, this will be a pre-order and this will be coming into our warehouse um, on Monday or Tuesday next week so that we don't have to put any extra pressure on someone who is already super busy. Um, and that's, you know, how great that we can do that. Really, really lucky. And there we go. So that's to give you an idea. And then there's also, I mean, there's, I, yeah, I think this was the one that I bought originally thinking that I would do something for Stephen with that. And I want to start to bring you a little bit more dressmaking. So I want to start stocking all of these fabrics. And it is 
it is a leap of faith because I'm learning with you. Jane tells me, she tells me a good teacher is only a couple of steps ahead of her students, so I'm going with that. I'm absolutely going with that. Um, so let's learn these skills. You know, you might be a superb seamstress, in which case, you know, let us know if there are different ways, if there are ways that you think are better um, or different or, you know, there's no one right way, is there? So let's check everybody is okay before we get cracking. Uh, thank you, Becky. Um, hello, hello, hello. Oh, Valerie's been out dog walking. Excellent. Surrounded by glorious autumn colour. Yeah, it is a bit special, isn't it? We've got a couple of trees out in the garden. We've got some aces and they are just stunning. Just stunning. Um, who else have we got? Good morning, Tony and Francis and Kim. Hello and Marion and Dee. Goodness, goodness, good morning to all of you. Um, hi, Basil, how are you? Um, oh, do you know, Ginny, I hope it's an exciting morning for Elizabeth. And... I also wanted to do this because I also know that Elizabeth um, is going to be moving house soon and that comes with a cost, right? So, um, you know, Elizabeth gets gets half of the pattern proceeds. So, you know, we're all, we are all good. And, um, and hopefully that should go a little bit towards buying a few cardboard box, <laughs> cardboard boxes for you, Elizabeth. Uh, because, you know, every, everybody's ideas, um, should always be rewarded and, um, and nobody should give anything for free. I firmly believe. So I don't know that Elizabeth knows that by the way. There you go. Um, so here it is, and this is it in the blue. But look, so can you see how the colour just starts to change through here, just very, very slightly. And as we spin it around, this is the only seam on it. Okay, through here. And it just sweeps around there. So it's really flattering in the way that it sweeps and also really beautiful in the way that it, it comes down um, through there. But like I say, if you wanted to, then you can always swizzle it around, she says, losing, losing the edge of it. There we go. And you could always have it just crossing over at the back and then having it at the front. If, you know, if, if there's, if you're more conscious, then you can do it that way. And the other way, actually, that we decided, because, um, Gemma, bless her, came over yesterday, my lovely friend Gemma, and I was like, look, Gemma, you are nearly a foot shorter than I am. Um, how much does she, how tall does she say she is? Like something like five foot one and a, f <laughs> and a fuck end or something. <laughs> I <can't laughs> but basically, there's me at nearly six foot and there's Gemma at not much over five foot. So I was like, right, let's just see. We couldn't be more opposites. And... Um, and so, yeah, it was just really lovely to see this wrap on other people because I know that people are going to ask, um, oh, can I make it longer? Can I make it shorter? Can I do whatever? So absolutely, yes. And in messing around and playing with these, what we also discovered worked rather beautifully is if you also just want to bring that round there and just wear it. as just a beautiful cowl necked um, scarf. That's the word, it's not a tricky one, is it? But no, it eluded me there. So really, it, what Elizabeth's given us here is three fantastic ways to wear one item of clothing and it will take you about 10 minutes to make. Honestly, so, so easy, okay? So let's also have a look at what it looks like in other fabrics as well. Because we've got those options too. Just jiggle it down there. And you can, if you want to, fold this over if you want to sort of give it a little bit of a collar. Depending on the fabrics, you can turn that around as well. It's so beautifully versatile. Um, it's really beautiful. So let's pop, oops, sorry lady, uh, that over there. And then let's have a look at some of the other options that we've got for you. And then we'll get going. Um, I didn't actually pop any of these on today because it would interfere with my microphone and you'd just get... <laughs> but let me show you, this was the original one. Now, if you want to, this was made with a half metre of fabric. A half metre. I mean, yeah, right, a half metre. And um, 
when you're trying to put it on, you need to, there's, a, there's the V at the back and then it just drapes. But if you want it longer, so the other one was longer, just add a couple of inches on. So that was 23 inches I did that one at. This is 20 inches. And again, you know, this is going to be, I've popped the lightweight calico on the show for you. So make it out of calico and check you're happy uh, because that's your cheapest way to do it. And it also means that you practice your old hem. But look, you just, then that seam just swoops down there and it's really, really gorgeous. So again, if you want to bring it up and wear it uh, as a scarf, then you can do. Or if you, you know, if you have something, you just want something over your shoulders and then you get to, you know, a restaurant or something and you just want to then have something around your neck, then do it that way. Um, but this is beautiful. So this is, and I've got this in three different colours, uh, this is a silk touch um, polyester satin and it is beautiful. And I thought it would be hideous, hideous to work with and it was lovely it was really lovely and um i'm so glad i bought it i'm so glad because it's just incredible and then this was the other one that has been sitting in my cupboard going what you gonna do what you gonna do with me what you gonna do with me um mm, wait till you see this right i'm gonna go close up on this this is and it's faux it's faux suede but suede fluff satin backed suede and I've got this in this gold color and a burnt orange if you love your all time the colors oh it's a bit super and of course when you get it in your stash I'm getting I'm getting a big roll of both of these colors um, so what that will mean is that also can you imagine making a matching clutch that's going to be happening yes it is but that is one fabric. And this is what I had you all on Facebook going, well, what's the, how, you, but, 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 no, nah, it's the fabric. That is your cotton backed faux suede. Is that not just the most beautiful fabric and it's only 12.99 a meter. Now, with these fabrics, Jane said to me this morning, do you want me to, um, to pre-cut some of these? I was like, no, 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 no. We're now into the wonderful world of, um, of dress making so you can order by the meter um, on these and they're really they're really not expensive these are 9.99 a meter these are eight this is 8.99 a meter um, and the the suede is 12.99 a meter so if you go for something like this and you and you go for the half meter length so that sits and that's it at a half meter so if you're more petite or you're shorter or what have you then that's going to work an absolute treat for you you'll get two out of your meter and that ends up being four pound fifty a make i mean you know uh that's pretty cool um oh, hang on did i just have a message that i needed to look at oh 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 the orifice have all gone oh my goodness Okay, I think I might need to get some more. <laughs> I need to get some more of those. I am going to take that as a resounding yes. That's <laughs> what you would like. Well, it's good to know, right? It's always good to know. I ask, I find out. That's great. Well done, you. Um, okay, so if we're looking at this fabric, I also have got it. Oh, this is your silver. How beautiful! I mean and again you know I get torn I go well actually that just makes a really look at the drape on it uh, I just think it's just I think it's beautiful so you've got that as your silver and then there's the pewter and I'm going to put the two side by side because the pewter is just a slightly darker shade can you see that <laughs> sorry love there we go. <laughs> that did this very well. <laughs> but that, there we go. That is, that's your pewter and that's the silver just so that you can see the difference in the colour and the drape you can see 
is absolutely stunning and I need to learn how to make shirts because <gasps> how many of you have seen The Fall? It was, was it BBC and now it's on Netflix? And Gillian What's Her Chops, who was, is it Anderson? Who was in, um, do, 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 what was it? Uh, oh, with all the aliens. Anyway, um, she looks phenomenal and so gorgeous. She basically just wears like this pencil skirt and then these satiny tops and looks amazing. We need to learn how to make blouses like those because they're so super flattering, really beautiful. There we go. And um, that's clearly what we all need. And that's the Navy. In the Navy. There we are. Okay. They are your options in that beautiful silk touch, silk touch satin. Ha ha. And this is 100, I think this is 150 wide or 145 wide. I would say when making the wrap, you want to go for something wider like that, definitely. Um, I did try it with something that was about 114 centimetres wide and you just, you just didn't get the drape. And that's what we're after. Look at that drape, it's beautiful. Right, shall we make one? Shall we, shall we? So first off, we need to manage to do a rolled hem. Okay, now, uh, how many of you have got rolled hem feet and how many of you have not? Um, the good news is a rolled hem foot is not very expensive to purchase and they come in different sizes, which is fab. And of course, now I'm frantically looking for, oh, there it is, for my normal foot so that I can show you both ways. Okay, so, shall we start with... And are we all okay before we crack on? Uh, whoop! Hang on, I might have to balance that on my drink. I've forgotten my other little stand. Um, de -de -de -de. Oh, dial on, we'll dye the pockets too. Oh, okay. Oh, Gemma says that one of her clients dyes her jeans low, says it's amazing. Not sure about covering bleach splashes, no but it's great for restoring faded colour. I'm, I've got some there, so I will give it a go and I will report back. Okay, now. Um, should we start from the very beginning? Let's start from the very basics and work our way up. So, if you do not have a rolled hem foot, and if, quite frankly, you have absolutely no intention of buying a rolled hem foot, all of which is absolutely fine, absolutely fine, then uh, let me show you how you can do a rolled hem without any any of that flim flam flippery. Meh, we'll have none of it. Oof. Okay. So I would firstly prep your fabric. And I've just got to turn that iron up a bit. Bit, bit, bit. There we go. When I come onto that, remind me to turn it back down again, as we could get in a little bit of trouble. Um, oh, Mandy's also stuck in the Welsh lockdown. What else is there to do but sew? Well, you know, I ask myself that. Um, oh, Diane, that's a voice of experience. The dialon is great, but don't do a whitewash <laughs> straight after. No, 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 no. Also in the mysterious box of goodies that wasn't my order um, was a machine washing sachet. So maybe you do that after the black dye. What do you think? Um, Karen says that she was watching a blog the other day and the lady used one of those dyes on her old denim pinafore and it worked a treat. Well, there we go. We might have solved, Barbara, your gene-based situation. Um, maybe give them a wash first to wash, wash out any bleach. Um, I'm no expert. I don't know. Just trying to help. Um, but I'll put them up. I'll put them up on the website for you later. And if you want it, oh, there you go. Sue says dialon is great, but if the fabric is already patchy, patchy, it will dye patchy. Uh, you would need to strip all the colour out first. So basically, does she need to dunk the whole thing in bleach first? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, and. <laughs> Diane, who has obviously had dye-based issues, uh, says you need to wipe around the door seal as can get some dye left in there too. Well, this is all worth knowing. Thank you. 
Oh, Myra says you can't dye jeans that's got bleach on them, unfortunately. Ask me why, lol. Oh, Myra, but thank you for... You see, you guys all know, don't you? And uh, Claire says she can't stand Mr. Tumble. Um, and lots of other famous children's too. I don't normally say bad stuff, but Mr. Tumble isn't my favourite. And Bing is a bit whingy, if I'm honest. We are very firmly a Sarah and Duck based family. Yeah. That's that's the honest truth of the situation. Right, so a rolled hem with no special foot or anything, anybody can do this on their machine. That's the honest truth of it. Um, if you have got a dressmaking pattern and it wants you to have a seam allowance of five eighths of an inch, then you want to sew your first line three eighths in. So you basically leave a quarter of an inch um, for all of your turning and everything else. So you start off, um, and if it doesn't matter, like on this, doesn't matter. Start wherever you like, doesn't matter. But if you've got something that has insisted uh, that your seam allowance is five eighths of an inch, so one and a half centimeters, um, then you would start and sew a line at three eighths of an inch. So that means that line is here for me. On my machine I've got five eighths there um, quarter of an inch there and off off we jolly well go and I've done this in a cotton to try and make it really easy for you to see so that you can see which is the right side which is the wrong side and all of that so that's the really easy bit just a straight line and now we take it over to the iron. Ba, 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 ba. And we press, 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 press. Are you all all right, by the way? Do you have a good weekend? Um, and so we've pressed that. And now what you want to do is turn that over and leave about an eighth of an inch. So you've pressed it and then you turn it and press it again. Oh, I should have gone with a different thread. You might not. I thought I'd gone with enough of a contrast, and I really haven't. So from the thread to the fold needs to be, if you can make it about, about an eighth, that would be great. Again, really don't, don't sweat it at all. But this is why. So you're going to turn this over by about an eighth. You'd have to be um, a little bit careful about getting that eighth if you were working tightly to that seam allowance um, but otherwise you know there or thereabouts and then let me show you so this is my initial line of stitching down there can you see yeah and then I've folded it over and pressed and again you know this is where having the best press spray is great because it's going to put texture in especially if you're working with silkier fabrics put that texture in with your best press and now we're going to stitch directly on top of that line directly on top all right so now i mean if you wobble a little bit the old sewing police are not going to come out but try and stay on top of that seam line on top of that stitch line and sew directly on top of that stitch line as much as you possibly can. Are you with me so far? Yeah, everyone could do this so far. Yeah. So we have got one, two lines of stitches on there and then this. We don't need this. Let's just chop this bit off. So you're going to get yourself a nice sharp little pair of scissors and come in and cut back to about an eighth of an inch. All right, I'll try and do this at a slightly awkward angle. I guess if you have something like, um, I was thinking about this, a plique scissors or something like that, you know, that make sure that, and don't, for goodness sakes, be careful not to cut through this fabric here. You will... Um, not be doing it for the camera so hopefully you will do a better job of it than I am 
but just get yourself a nice sharp little pair of snips get in there and snippity snip back okay so now you've got an eighth of an inch eighth of an inch and you are going to roll that here because it's a roll hem right you're going to roll that and press it in place that's the next thing okay and again if you want to pop a little spritz of that on then do but you basically are going to roll to so that you're rolling and covering that raw edge that you've just cut And that's why you leave a quarter of an inch to where your seam needs to get to. If you're working to a pattern on this, it doesn't matter. Start it, finish it, wherever you like. It really doesn't matter. There we go. And then all you need to do... So that's pressed. And then we're going to stitch again on that line so once more on top of that line Now I'm no expert, but I reckon that everyone can manage that. And that gives you one lining of stitch, one line of stitching from the top. Just one line of stitching from there. And then it's rolled and sealed and done. And that's a minuscule, that's what, a quarter of an inch? Yeah, that's a quarter of an inch rolled there. Okay. So that is option number one. That are easy peasy, right? Now, if you have rolled hem feet and this is what you're looking for, is this, this foot. Um, and on these, you can see uh, that is a six mil, four, and a three. Okay, and that's the size of the roll you're going to get. I'm going to work with the four. I'll go middle of the road for you. Now, you can use these. The thicker your fabric, obviously, the larger you want to go with these, or the wider you need your hem, the wider you want to go with that. But let's have a look at this. So this is your rolled hem foot. And can you see that little channel there? Your fabric, your edge will go in and be twisted around and under, be poked back under so that as it comes there, your machine needle will just tick, 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 and stitch it all in place. This also means you can see that this here comes out here so that if you want to do um, a zigzag stitch, you can actually very cleverly scallop the edge of um, that's I mean that's a whole other thing, but it's easily done. You can then put uh, use a zigzag stitch um, or a um, oh what you call it um, blind hem stitch, and you can zig and you can scallop the edge, which is very very clever, very very clever indeed. So let's have a look at this option. So just take and these are these are universal feet. They just snap on. First thing you want to do, pull out some thread, okay, and then dee -dee -dee -dee. go to the top of the fabric that you're working with, keep a hold of this thread, you want to go forwards, a couple of, in a couple of stitches, literally a couple of stitches, back and 
back a couple of stitches yeah uh, then lift your needle lift your foot pull it out the side and you see I've got long threads here and you want to trim them long all right now what you then do is you're going to use these as an anchor point and that's why my machine's at this slightly strange angle for you so that you can see and uh, you're going to take this under the foot and just start to thread your fabric in like that into that swirly bit and pull it through otherwise you get your fingers all jammed under there but look I can move that in and out by pulling pulling on these to there and when you've got it there if you've got a knee lift on your machine then great if you don't I mean this machine's fabulous because I can just I can just bring my foot down but bring the foot down and you and then just start to stitch and you see that is taking that around curling it under and giving you that rolled hem practice it Pra just practice it because it might not it might not come naturally first of all but it's like any of these things just just practice practice and so skirts dresses anything like that that needs a rolled hem at the end you can do that you can absolutely there you go there it is rolled so we've got rolled with no special foot we've got rolled on a machine with the foot and you see that's nice and even all the way along and that's that done so that can be your seam now uh, you can do that with the smaller if you want a smaller hem remember I went middle of the road you can do that with your smaller um, one if you want a more delicate one but that's I mean that's pretty discreet for a rolled hem use these on napkins this is how they do the hems on wedding dresses things like that trust me I've done I've done my research on these today oh yes now for some reason um, my machine oh my internet's gone a bit funny today there we go right so that is that's hems two ways rolled hems two ways i tell you on saturday i didn't know how to do a rolled hem i did a lot of <laughs> lot of research elizabeth what are you doing to me what are you doing to me eh? um yeah i did a lot of research and and just practiced you know so jane's analogy that um jane's saying that a teacher is only a couple of steps ahead is is so so true really really is true uh, now if you've got an overlocker happy days because uh, you can just you can absolutely fly with this so let me bring out the overlocker and I'm going to position this hopefully so that you can see so if I turn this across here um, I'm just going to degree poke it around a lot of overlockers will also be able to do a rolled hem okay uh, mine is the dukey here we go i could put it there for you can i so you can see um, just little bits of it as we go first thing you want to do sure um, that's what an extension table's there for but there we go so with mine and please excuse the mess of it um you want to take out the needle on the left hand side you do this with one needle if you're doing a rolled hem okay so it's a three three thread rolled hem sometimes what it's known as and i can kind of show you putting it back in can't i but 
A lot of machines will come with a brush and I don't know if you've ever noticed that you've got a hole in the end there um, which you just put at the base of your needle and pull up and that's a really easy way then to just get your needle in or out if you need be. You would just screw in there, righty tighty lefty loosey, unscrew it, take the needle out and then everything is stored in here with with this particular one so this is the Juki. um it is the uh, mo 2000 qvp it's pretty much exactly the same um as the 1000 mo 1000 it's just it's got some different colorings they always bring out a different one for like festival of quilts and stuff like that so you take the needle out with the power off let's be safe and then you turn your power on. Ba -da -ba -ba. Here we go. Now, if you have an LCD screen like this one, um, if you've got this exact same one, ev obviously everyone's is a little bit difficult. And this was the only one that was a little bit tricky to kind of write for because everybody's machine is slightly different. But this, um, tells me that I've got a three thread roll hem. That's what I'm going to do. And if I go here, then it will also give me an idea as to, all right, all right, it's got pinions, uh, but it will also tell me the different tensions and stuff, which you can't see, different tensions. That's my key to uh, left needle, right needle, and then my upper looper and lower looper there. Okay, so then if I press this button here, it tells me my different tensions, should I need to change them, and my stitch length, and everything else along here. So, the reason I've got this balanced up on my machine up here is because I want to show you then the next step that you need to do. And I'm just going to spin this around because it's the best way then to show you. Um, the next thing you want to do is move this lever towards you. Now, if I open this up here, Please excuse the fluff. But if I move it backwards, can you see this little bit here moves? Okay. So when it's forward and towards the presser foot, that puts it into overlock mode. And as soon as you move it back there, that selects it so that you're going to do a rolled hem rather than overlock. So push forward, that puts you into overlocking mo mode, pull back, it's going to put you into a rolled hem mode. Okay, so just look if you've got a selector um, on your machine, then that is what you want um, to be to be moving. Okay. Now, um, obviously we've got three threads here, so um, we want to well, we'll have a look at the tensions of that in a minute. This here is going to be my cutting width, and that is changed to 1.5 anywhere between 1 and 1 1.5, which then means that over here, this is my stitch length, and I put that on anywhere between 1 and 1 1.5 as well, okay? So that, that just changes there, all right? Uh, the other thing then to mention is up here, Just move that down there. So your end one, this is your lower looper here, and you want to have your tension on anywhere between sort of five and seven. This is this is the point at which um, it tells me, and you want to have that anywhere between sort of five and seven. So it's just bet before the seven there on that tension. Now this next one, this thread here, it's in a slightly different colour. When you're doing um, a three thread rolled hem, that will be the colour that rolls around the edge. This is my upper loop, it's going to roll around, um, around my hem and this is the colour that I'm going to see. Uh, let me see if I've got... So this is predominantly the colour that I'm going to see. Can you see that? It's rolled it and that's the one that we're going to see. Which means that if, and excuse me, stretching there, if you want to put fluffy nylon in, 
yeah, 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 yeah. And this is fluffy nylon. So fluffy nylon is exactly that. It's it's a it's a thicker stranded nylon thread here. And that just goes through um, and you would only you only need to put that on your upper loop. But it's a bit of a cheat because it means that if you're doing different colours, you you can kind of get away with keeping the other threads the same colour and just change this one because this is the one that you're going to really see. Okay, and so you can have this and then this becomes almost a feature as well. So if you want to highlight Maybe you wanted to go for a bright, shocking pink on a black or something like that and really show, you know, really show up. Then your fluffy nylon is great. We've got those on the website for you. They're all on there because they can be quite tricky to find. But these are all coming from Juki. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're absolutely fab if you want to use those. All right. Now, I am going to see what we can what we can see see what we can see whoops throw that across the desk uh right oh yeah so my point being that if you're using the fluffy nylon then you'll want to bring the tension on that middle on that end looper between three and four okay let's spin this bad boy around then and let me see what if anything view you are gonna get ah Will you bear with me, caller, if I just move my camera? There we go. So there. All right. Should we do it in the purple? It's a bit special, isn't it? So if you are working with an overlocker, then you don't have to do any of that rolled hem on the machine business. Nah, -uh. this is all you will be doing. Um. Is this, it will cut it. Helps if I don't stand on the edge of it. And have it all looking very, very lovely for you. Oh, 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 hang on. Some things come unthreaded. So, oh, hang on. So before you start, right, this is lesson 101, isn't it? Ah, there we go. So all that had happened, you can see, that's not happy. And now you can see happy again. And all that happened, let me just run that off, was that um, my end looper had come out of sync. So what we'll do is just take take that off and just re-stitch that hoping that everything is now where it should be this had obviously been on the floor and been knocked or had the cats or the kids or something on it but you should you know obviously best practice is to do a little test piece check that nothing like that's happened and off we go So however you are going to do your rolled hem, this is, this is the easiest, of course it is, but like I said, if you want to use a fluffy nylon, then that will really emphasise that seam, should you wish. But the others do work just as well. Okay, and then you literally turn your fabric and go down the <laughs> down the next side. Or, 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 if you want to have that as a feature because it's quite a nice, quite a nice end, then there's no reason that you can't have that as a feature if you want. Especially with some of these beautiful fabrics, um, it's really rather gorgeous. But if you don't, if you want that selvage off. Then off we go again. And what I will just show you is if you are doing this, is what I do with my ends. Because it's very tempting to just chop them off, but there's a more secure way. Because this fabric will wash. I am 
very, very tempted. This machine is on the website, by the way. You'll notice with me, I stock the machines that I use because I, I think that's the only, that's the best endorsement that I can possibly give is that these are the machines that I use every day myself. So I'm happy to endorse them. And this machine, actually, I saved up five years for this. So I know when people say, oh, you know, it's expensive, blah, 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 blah. I know, I know. I saved up for, I wanted an overlocker for years. It took me five years to save up for one. And I actually bought this while I was on maternity leave with Emily. And oh my goodness, to celebrate all the dogs had new beds. Because it's perfect for that. And um, I used to take all the scrap fabrics from when I was on sewing quarter and I used to make them into dog beds to take down to Dog's Trust rather than the scraps being thrown away. And, um, and this was great because I could just put a bit of wadding in between, a bit of um, fleece or something on the back. And rather than doing beautifully bound edges for the dogs that really, you know, wouldn't appreciate it. I just used to overlock the edges and it was so easy. Last side. So this really is a from start to finish um, demo on this for you because I wanted you to see how easy it is. You're going to be making these for presents for so many people which bear in mind if you aren't a giant like me um, and lovely Tina, because Tina said, oh, can you make it a little bit longer? And I was like, yeah, but just bear in mind, I'm nearly six foot. She's like, yep, so am I. I was like, okay, yeah. So anywhere between 20, 22 and 24 inches, um, then you're done. That's all the overlocking that we need to do. I can turn that off now and take that out of the way. There we go. <coughs> Benzy knees, they're quite heavy. So we've overlocked all four edges. Okay, and um, what do we do with these dastardly tails? What do we do with those? Actually, for those of you that are making the smarf, um, there was a lady in America who'd got the pattern and she was brilliant. She said, oh, should I love the pattern? Uh, but it's a right. And she said something that was very American. I can't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> along the lines of it was a bit tricky to turn through but she had overlocked hers which of course you can do you can absolutely do that and um, so she just left on the corner she left the edges long like that and used that to then pull them through so if you have an overlocker and you are making the smarts excuse me I just need to get a needle um, and you're making the smarts then um, Overlock it, leave that edge long and pull it through. Genius, 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 genius. And if you've got lots of friends who have been asking you for smarfs, and quite frankly, you don't, you don't want to delve into your stash or you don't have the time, I have great news because as of, gosh, what day was it? Thursday this week, um, the smarfs have gone in to um, professional manufacture so exciting i didn't know how to do any of this this is it isn't it life is a learning curve but so many people were asking if um if if they could just buy them ready made that we were like oh, god i need to do this so i've taken a massive leap of faith um that there is a market for it out there and uh, yeah they are now in manufacture. And this was the other thing. So then I had the dilemma. Do I, do I try and get it sourced in China and all that? And I thought, you know what? That just doesn't feel right for me. Um, and you guys all know my, my way of business is it has, to feel, it has to feel right in the heart first and then everything else can follow. Um, I've got to live with my heart and my conscience. Don't have to live with the bank manager. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it's got to be. So actually, they're all being manufactured in the UK, which I'm thrilled about, and which also meant that I could then support some of my favourite, favourite fabric artists 
and I'm having some produced in K fabrics, Philip Jacob fabrics, um, and and all all sorts of other wonderful wonderful uh, designers. There's some Tim Holtz coming. There's all kinds of things, as well as much plainer ones for men as well. Although I have to say, Mr. Law, you do look very dapper in your Tim Holtz one that Helen made you. Very, very smart indeed. What am I doing? Let me show you. Moving the camera, that's what I'm doing. Hang on, let me see where I need to move it to. Having wiggled and jiggled stuff around. Ta -da! There we go. So these edges, these overlocked edges, here we are. You can have a tail with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Get yourself an embroidery needle or something like that. And then all I do is thread it back through the stitches. Now, obviously, that is quite tricky doing that, standing up looking the, looking the wrong way. Um, but just thread it back through your stitches there. And then it won't come unraveled and then you can just trim it and you'll be fine okay that'll come off and then it's just it's just then hidden in your hem hidden in your hem right so we have one line of stitching to do and that is it okay so let's excuse me my dear madam here whilst I uh <coughs> okay this is all about the twist, and there is only one twist in this. So, oh, you'd repeat that, by the way, with the needle in all four corners. So, drape your lady. Now, bear in mind, you, I mean, you can use your husband or anybody that you can find, or you can do this on yourself as well. I'm just doing this because it's easier to show you like this. So, you want to drape it on, I mean, gosh, you could drape it on anything. You could drape it over a chair if you wanted to. But if you're using something like the Paisley, please decide which way you want to see most of. Um, and that's going to be across the back. So if you want predominantly the purple with just the gold, then swap it around. Can you see that just makes a little difference there? Or if I'd have wanted mainly the gold showing, then there. If you don't care, you don't care. Right. So... My long edge is all the way looped over. This is where Elizabeth messages in and goes, why well, didn't do it like that? You've completely made it up, Natasha. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> Elizabeth sent me photos and <laughs> a little tiny, tiddly, tiny made up one like this. And um, which would probably fit Emily's bear. Must try it on her. So I had to kind of work it all out from this. That was the odd naughty word. It was fine. And so um, you are going. Here we go. This is your short side. So you want to look at the short side. So everything is draped beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. And hold up your short side. And you are going to take the bottom right hand corner, you are going to flip it up. Okay? So this is how it was lying. Ha! Ah, beautiful. You are going to take the very bottom right hand corner and flip it. Okay? And then you see this line that comes round the neck here. Align this one on top of that one okay now when I do this I I sort of took the line like you would with a dart that you would you sew the dart going from front to back so it doesn't stick out so I've done the same with this I've done this this top bit going on top of this bottom piece here and then you just want to overlap those seams tiny bit. I'm just going to pop a pin in there because this is the edge that you want to align here by about an eighth of an inch. That's it. Okay. So pop that in there. You can take that off now. 
and then back at your desk, your table, wherever you sew, all you will want to do is, and you can sort of see this, well you will, if I move it to here. Oh, that's quite nice actually because you can see um, the goldy side one side and the silvery side and the purpley side the other. So, line one over the top of the other, like so. Um, pin it, clip it, do whatever you want. But this, this is the edge that you want to make sure is just really nice and smooth and then just move that up there and just pop a pin in I'm going to start sewing from that side, so I should probably have put my pins in this way thinking about it. That would be more sensible. Um, but anyway, you pin all the way along, and then you are literally going to sew from there to there. That is it. Promise. That is it. So... Take it to your machine. Other foot on. De -de -de -de. Come back here, Mr. Foot. Turns out I can't do this one hand. There we go. Okay. So the front goes over the back like that. That would have all have been tucked in nice and neatly. Now all I'm going to do, put that foot down, do a holding stitch three times, okay, so that I know that I'm all held in position. And then off we go. And I'm going to sew directly onto that rolled hem so that from the top I can't see I just I can't see another line of stitching and as you can see this fabric is actually really nice to sew because I'll be honest I did think oh it's gonna be slippery and hot no 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 it's not it's really not So the time spent with this is actually just in the preparation. It's not actually in the final construction at all. And it is easy to get, you know, I got myself in a few knots, not going to lie, um, when trying to work out what went where. Oh gosh, isn't this fabric just divine? Um, but at the end of the day, I got there, photographed the instructions, learned how to <laughs> put arrows onto my instructions to show you in which direction you need to flip stuff. And we are all good. Now, somebody put a comment on my Facebook page saying, well, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for designing something to where when we go out, lol, we're never going out. But here's my thing. In the same uh, little scout around Facebook, I also found, you know, the, the horse and the mole and the, those beautiful books. I can't remember who they're by, but the illustrations are just beautiful. Um, and... 
And there, there was a beautiful saying that I saw, which was, you know, the, the sort of, we can't do anything, everything's cancelled and what, whatever. But no, happiness isn't cancelled. So if that means that you Zoom with your family and you have a little Zoom with your family and you all dress up to make yourself feel nice and make yourself feel like it's um, an occasion, then why not? You don't have to go out. And, um, you know, if you are on lockdown, there is absolutely nothing wrong in venturing out of those pyjamas and into something lovely. And especially if you do feel a bit blue, sometimes all you need, um, and what really helps me, is to put your makeup on, put on something that feels nice, pair of heels, lifts the bum, and off you go. Perfect. Right. That's my humble opinion on it anyway. So now all we are going to need to do, this is actually the hardest bit, is working out which way on it goes. Um, and so with that, find your tip. Theo, you can't come in the window. <laughs> Theo's gone, uh, you're doing something, I'm not involved, can you just open the window and let me in? No, I can't, and there's a reason that the door's shut as well, so you don't come in. Um, actually, wouldn't this be fabulous kimono fabric too? Oh, so gorgeous. So, the, dip, the little V dip at the end And you can decide how you wish to wear this, but on the back, it comes to this beautiful V here and then swoops down. And this is, I mean, this is where, so if you want it longer, this is where you'd uh, use more than half a meter of fabric, add a few more inches on, and it swoops down to that lovely V at the bottom there. Um, so it covers everything. It just, nice, 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 nice. Um, if you want to, from here, you can always sort of fold it out as well, if you want to do that. And that gives it another look, but it's just about how it just folds and hangs so beautifully in these really stunning fabrics. Ta-da! Or if you want to, swizzle it round so that it's at the front and that's at the back. Um, or again, just shoosh it all forward and wear it as a beautiful cowl neck like I showed earlier. And that's it. You know, I mean, you're going to hand that with, well, yeah, I've already got one, two, three, four, four, yeah, five, five. <laughs> They're a little bit addictive to make, um, but they're really, really lovely to make. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this today because um, I'm so grateful to Elizabeth um, for sharing this with us. And, um, and it's lovely to be able to support her and help her with her move and everything. So that's what you're doing when you, when you purchase this pattern today is that you, um, you know, you're helping a small business and, uh, and yeah you know, you're supporting, which is really lovely. And that's always been my ethos here. Um, and, uh, and so it's really lovely that we can, we can keep that up. So that, good people, is today's show. And if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, and yeah. Oh, <laughs> everyone's all about the, the, do you want me to load that black dye for jeans, by the way? Shall I go and do that after the show? <laughs> We'll go and do that. Um, oh, Julia says she's a bit late. Sorry, but love the fabric on the mannequin. It's a bit special, isn't it? It is a bit special. Uh, so, oh, and Suzanne loves the variegated thread. So my mission today is to try and get then some more Aurifil for you. And also um, remember that if you're buying the fabric today, there will be a slight delay on getting it. That is what I have to say, really. Um... Anyway, I hope that you've had um, a nice time joining us this morning. I will be back tomorrow 
Um, I will have these beautiful cat panels tomorrow for you. They will be on the show. And also, um, delivery is pending. I don't know if you remember a little while ago, I put on a Tilda um, cushion. Actually, I demoed it at Ho-Chanda, but I'll demo it for you as well. I put on a Tilda cushion with the goose. So we've got that on the show. And yeah, it's just some gorgeous goodies tomorrow. So do tune in for tomorrow. A little bit of a change of pace. And <laughs> Julia, ooh, fabric. Ooh, purple. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. Maggie says, I absolutely love anything from House of Alistair. And the navy white and cream jacquard fabrics. And when his stuff arrives, it smells heavenly. From his scented buckwheats, I assume you are quite right. And if you watch this space, um, I have got all of those arriving in the next couple of weeks. So we will have your homes smelling of buckwheat, smelling of lavender, smelling of sandalwood and Christmas and all the other beautiful scents that we've got there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then, you lovely people. I will see you tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Um, although if you're watching from the States or somewhere, I did suddenly realise that it was daylight saving, isn't it? So um, British daylight saving. So uh, thank you for bearing with us with the hours difference. Um, I have... <laughs> I have a business coach in Australia and I get up on a Sunday at 4 a.m. to to connect with him. And uh, so that meant I suddenly realised, I don't know, I must have dreamt it or something, but in the night, oh no, I'm going to have to talk to Craig at three in the morning instead. So bless him. He, he was good as gold about it. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth says, thanks for that. I need boxes. You're going to need boxes, Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Emma, uh, Gemma says it's sort of five foot and a fag end. Yeah, I, I gave you an extra inch there earlier, Gemma. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and she says that her mum is five foot one and insists that she's shorter. Eds, it's not a competition. And Claire Angelina says, I'm only five foot three and I've been called Titch by my six foot tall younger brother for years. Brothers are mean, aren't they? Um... Oh, well, look, you guys. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth says, I'm Auntie Hobbit to my six foot nieces. <laughs> she even had hairy feet in her days of hairdressing. I'm assuming that's from the hair you cut off other people. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, Lizanne, yes, of course, you can watch this later. This will all be on YouTube for you. It will be on the website and it will be on Facebook for you anytime you like. So I will see you gorgeous people tomorrow. Take care. Have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.